you saw the TikTok. Welcome to my channel and today we're going to be talking about Emily and Potty because it actually got better. 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 The first two seasons got on my nerves. I need to know which brainless bimbo wrote them and if they changed the writer or maybe they just gave the writer a piece of all of us's minds and collectively he had the best IQ because I mean it's not exactly the best show ever but Season 3 and 4 are definitely better than the first couple of seasons in terms of plot. Not in terms of everything else, but in terms of plot, they have definitely leveled up. So I watched the season 3 because I hadn't before. When season 4 came out, I was like, oh, I know I watched season 3. So I went ahead, watched season 3, and then I watched season 4. And now I sit in front of you to talk about it. And let's get into it because I have the habit of yapping, so... Let's just get into it. Outdoor campaign launched today in Paris, New York, and Seoul. C'est magnifique. Et comment tu vas l'appeler? Crystal Heart. We will call it the Featherington Blue. How original. No help from the government? What is this? America? D, can you start tonight? I have plans with Nicola tonight. Why don't you ask him for the money? So we're going to completely skip the conversation about how you're dating Nicola now and how his suspicions this entire time were correct. What the hell, Cooper? I mean, when were you going to tell me that my face is plastered all over the city? Looking at you like you're not about to ruin my life. And I know that you're upset, but can we please just talk about what happened? If I was in her place, I would have literally stood up right there and then and told everybody that Camille was cheating. Because what the hell do you mean? You don't love your fiancé, you love somebody else, you were cheating, and you're breaking off this wedding, and you're gonna throw me under the bus? <sighs> he made a few rude comments about what you wore at the cadeau launch party, <laughs> and I just didn't want that to happen again. But in the future, I'll wear whatever the fuck I want. I think about that a lot because, no offense, most men do not have a fashion sense. And also, no offense to Mindy, it was not the fact that you were half naked, that was just a horrendous dress. So I think about that a lot. What if my husband wants to dress like a freaking homeless man and wants to walk around like a freaking joke? And if I mention it and if I'm like, you know, babe, try dressing up a little more sophisticated, like, I don't want to walk around with that. And he's like, oh my god, you don't love me for who I am. How do you talk to a grown adult and tell them to act like a fucking adult, that is? You do not want me to stay with this much rage and free alcohol. I don't know if the problem is with Ashley Park, the writers or the directors. I don't know whose fault it is. But you know how there is this whole drama going on about Blake Lively and how she has no range and she only acts as herself in every film? I fear that maybe Ashley Park. I'm sorry, I don't know. I haven't seen all of her projects and I'm trying to understand, but I'm really not understanding because it's a train wreck. Honestly, Emily in Paris is one of those dumpster fires where you don't know what is really igniting the fire. Is it the director, is it the writer, or is it the actor herself? Because if Mindy's entire role was just being Emily's best friend, then Ashley Park is doing a great job. She is doing the most excellent job. She's wonderful at that. You should not have given her a backstory then. If she was supposed to be just this, you should not have given her a backstory because we know it and it's constantly mentioned that she's a billionaire and she is Chinese. But the girl does not act like it. In all four seasons, there has not been a split second, not a split second where she has acted Chinese or like a billionaire. Not a split second. It's insane. Four seasons and not a split second. See, that wasn't romance, that was just heartbreak. And now look at me at this opportunity. Oh my god, should I get one of those? Like, I already have the Z Flip and I'm recording on it right now, so I can't show it to you, but I'm so freaking dramatic when it comes to ending my calls because I'm like, choop. Imagine I get one of these bracelet thingies as well because then I'll be like, choop and drop. Choop. You matter to me more than him or this. Oh my. Pick whatever you like. <gasps> and you deserve this. 
Apology accepted. I'm sorry, I am so over this because there is literally zero chemistry. And why is she giggling like a peasant? She is literally a billionaire herself, so it doesn't make sense for her to be so excited over some clothes. Like that has been the problem with this show since season one. All these characters are walking around in thousands of dollars worth of clothes and we're like, how can they afford it? How can they afford all these designer clothes? So then they gave us a reason. Emily works for like a marketing firm, so she might be getting a lot of free clothes. And Mindy is a billionaire. But then they specify and they don't, they don't show us any scenes where Emily might be receiving clothes from any brands. And Mindy is completely cut off from her father. Her billionaire father is not giving her a single penny. She's literally busking on the streets. So how is she affording all these clothes? It doesn't make any sense. Like if they had gone with a different approach where Mindy had been completely cut off from her father for a couple of years and the girl is living on the streets, she's been going to TJ Maxx, she's going to Goodwill, that's where she's getting her clothes. It would have made sense that after all these years, she's finally seeing those designer clothes again and she's like, oh my God, my billionaire boyfriend. <laughs> I'm so happy to have clothes again. It doesn't make sense that she's giggling over Valentino and Gucci. She's supposed to be a Chinese billionaire. They have their own fucking brands. Billionaires don't even wear Gucci and Christian Louboutins. They have their own brands that people like you and me don't even know about. Why is she giggling over some freaking Versace clothes? Another big problem with this whole thing is that Mindy and Nicola have no chemistry. Literally, which, which surprises me because I caught it because this entire time there have been so many different couples like there's Emily and Gabrielle, Emily and Alfie, Camille and Gabrielle, there's Mindy and Bonwa, Sylvie and her boyfriend, Sylvie and Antoine, even freaking Emily and Antoine have a lot of chemistry, but Mindy and Nicola have no chemistry whatsoever. Literally whatsoever, they have no chemistry. And I don't know, the way Mindy kisses him is just weird. I don't know, like the way, she, like she's been kissing Bonoa this, this whole time. So it's not the fact that Ashley Park is a weird kisser. She's a great kisser. I don't know, I've never kissed her, but like visually speaking. But the way she kisses Nicola, it's, it gives me the ick every single time. She gave me hope that not every French person hated me just because I'm American. No, they hate you because you steal their boyfriends. You think she's having an abortion? Yes, it's not illegal in this country. They really went from roasting France to roasting America. Now we're talking. You told Gabrielle about Sophia and now they're both texting me. Yeah, I told Emily's fault that you cheated on your fiance and then ghosted everyone. From the first time I, seen you, uh... I had to buy you enough for free. Well, four. You're having twins? God, no. I was counting Sophia. And now that I'm not with either of them, I'm... You're not with Alfie? <gasps> Why is he suddenly kind of hot again? What inspired you to create a unisex fragrance? My divorce. David. Sure, yes, both. I really thought that I could move on from them, but they both mean so much to me for different reasons. And I feel like in every love triangle, we always have the question, is it going to be Alfie or Gabrielle? And I have my answer. Emily being who she is, she makes a lot of mistakes mistakes she makes a lot of them and she needs someone who actually sticks with her and understands her and that person is not Alfie. Alfie is good at running away hiding away ghosting hiding he is good at that and there is nothing wrong with it he deserves to have self-respect and if he respects himself and doesn't want to be with someone like emily well and good but emily is not going to change she makes mistakes and she makes pacts and she hides things and she is this chaotic person, and if we have seen one thing in the past four seasons, it is that Gabrielle has stuck with her throughout everything. That man has never ghosted her. Even when she has told him to his face, like, I don't want to be with you, he has still been there for her. So, I mean, the showrunners can go ahead and, like, marry her off to a tree for all they care, because they might just will. But if we look at realistically, Emily should be with Gabrielle. That and the fact that he's hot. <laughs> You did all 
all of this? I don't know why we even had that conversation because this whole time, this whole show, they have either been manipulating us into falling into the delusion of Gabrielle or they actually mean it because name one scene of Emily and Alfie that is as pretty as Gabrielle and Emily's scenes. Like Emily and Gabrielle be going out to the most beautiful, the most aesthetic, the most pretty places. Like they're going to museums, they're going to pop it, they're going to Michelin star restaurants, they're going to rooftop Eiffel Tower in the background, sexy nights. They are doing all this beautiful stuff. Alfie and Emily have never done anything like that. N never. So maybe they're trying to make us fall for Gabrielle the red flag. But I think Gabriella is it. I think he is it. They put a lot more effort on Gabrielle than they do on Alfie. I can be performing in a club associated with Sylvie. I am not asking you to choose a side. I'm asking you to choose me. You know what? At this point, I feel like she did her father a favor by leaving him. And I totally understand why that man is not working overtime to bring her back because she's freaking brain dead. I have not ran as much as a lemonade stand in my life and even I understand business more than her because the hell does she mean by that? Her father is supposed to be the zipper king of China. She should know some rules of business, of public relations, of media training. How the hell is she Chinese and she does not have media training? They even gave media training to the freaking swimmers in the Olympics. One day he gave the interview, immediately they gave him media training, and the next day he was giving a different kind of interview. You cannot tell me that in all 30 years of her life, she never got media training. So I told the Guardian there were three people living in your apartment. So did I. It began with a passionate love affair. It's I'm sorry, I did not expect this video to be a Mindy rant, but I suppose that's what it became because the hell. So that was it for this video. I guess if you guys enjoyed it, I don't know. I can't even ask you if you enjoyed it or not because my jaw is hurting from all the yapping and the yelling that I did. So I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry for yelling so much. But yeah, let me know if you agree with me in the comments and also subscribe, click the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload and also follow me on my Instagram and TikTok. They're both at Alnif Fox. And yeah, that is it. I'm the only Alnif Fox in this world. And I just remembered that I did not add end credits in my last video. You know, the videos that pop up like, oh yeah, you can watch this video next or you can watch this video next or subscribe. You know, that those kind of things, the pop-up videos. I forgot to add them on my last video. Maybe even the video before that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll catch you in the next video.